On the screen, I have a Laravel application with a very simple form. Problem is when I submit this form, I see the error 419 page expired. The most common explanation for why you're seeing this error is your form isn't set up correctly. To understand what I mean, let me jump over to the code base for this form. You can see I'm submitting the form via post. And anytime you're doing that, you're gonna need a special hidden field within your form that has a security token. There are two ways you can set up this field. The first is you can manually create it. So I'm just gonna create a basic input. I'm gonna set the type to be hidden. The name I wanna give it is underscore token. This is a special name that Laravel is gonna be looking for when it processes this form request. And then for the value, we're gonna set it to be the output of an invocation of Laravel's CSRF underscore token helper method. And with that in place, let's check out the impact on our form. So coming back to the browser, I'm gonna go back, refresh the page, and from a user's perspective, they don't see anything different because we just added a hidden field. It's not something that you're actually gonna see in the browser. However, if we were to look at the underlying source code, we can see that hidden field behind the scenes. And here is the result of that CSRF token invocation. It uh, generates this encrypted string that is tied to our session with this application. And with that value there, coming back to our form, we should now be able to submit it and perfect. It worked, we didn't run into that 419 page expired error. And just as a bonus tip, coming back to our code, uh, rather than manually creating this hidden input, a uh, shortcut we could take is there is a Blade directive called CSRF that will actually generate that input for us. Uh, and just to show this in action, I'm gonna save these changes. Let's go back to our form and refresh it and look at the page source again. And you can see we get the same outcome as when we did it manually. We've got a hidden field with the appropriate name and we've got a CSRF token for our value. All right, so either method uh, would work. I did show you the manual first, just to understand what we're actually aiming for. But of course, uh, it's gonna be much more convenient and concise if you are working with Blade to use this shortcut. Now, if for some reason your form already had this field set up and you're still seeing that 419 error, check out the notes I have that accompany this video. There's a section called other possible causes that lists other reasons why you might running, uh, be running into that problem. So this would be a good place to start. Read through the information I have here. Uh, and if this doesn't point you in the right direction, leave a comment below explaining what the problem is and I can try to help you troubleshoot. Uh, but I want to spend the remainder of this video talking about what is the point of this field? What is a CSRF token? Why were we seeing that expired page to begin with? Uh, and to begin with, what CSRF is, it's short for cross-site request forgery. And it happens when you have some other server or site that is trying to submit requests to your application. And for an example of this, I'm gonna go over to the Laravel documentation because I think they do a pretty good job of explaining it. All right, so here's the example they provide. Um, imagine your application has a user email route that accepts a post request to change the authenticated user's email address. Most likely this route expects an email input field to contain the email address the user would begin using. Uh, very similar to what I'm showing in this example here, you have a form, it submits to some route via post, it takes an email address. Now here's where the problem could come in. Without CSRF protection, a malicious website could create an HTML form that points to your application's user email route and submits the malicious user's own email address. And here's the code example they have for that. So they've got a simple form, but the action of the form is actually submitting to your application. And within that form, they have an email input with their email address. And then down here, they just have a single line of JavaScript that when this code is run, this JavaScript would submit this form. So all they have to do is trick users that are logged into your site to just visit a page on their website that would automatically submit this form to your site and could uh, potentially process this request, updating their email addresses. And of course, once that email address changed to the hacker's email address, well, the hacker has access because they could go about uh, resetting passwords, doing that sort of thing. All right, so that's a prototypical example of a cross-site request forgery, where you have this request coming from some outside site uh, attempting to do malicious things with the form processing on your site. And a way that we guard against this is with this CSRF token system. All right, so this goes back to the token we set up in the form 
uh, at the beginning of this video where we have this encrypted value. This is a security token that is tied to our session on this website. And what's going to happen is when we submit this form, Laravel has some middleware or some filters in place that's going to be checking for this token and ensuring it's there. And by validating that token, it's basically validating that this request is coming in uh, as a valid request from the same application that is processing it so you don't fall subject to those cross-site request forgeries. Now to wrap up this discussion, I want to leave you with a couple miscellaneous points. Point number one is that this whole CSRF system within Laravel only applies when you're submitting forms via post. If you're submitting a form via get, you don't need a CSRF token. It's not something that's gonna be checked. And the reason for this is just the nature of when we use post versus get. Post is typically reserved for requests that are having some change on your server. For example, interacting with your database such that information is uh, updated or deleted, or even if it's read, if it's of uh, secure information, it's information that should only be available to logged in users, you would do that all via post. Uh, whereas get is more of a general request, you might do that on like a search form where anybody could come and search and access public information. In that situation, we're not really worried about cross-site um, attacks. The other miscellaneous tip that I'll share is that uh, everything I've talked about with uh, Laravel checking for the CSRF token, it does that by default with post requests. But if you wanted to overwrite it and say exclude certain routes from being checked, that is possible. And the way you would do that is within your application, if you go into app, HTTP middleware, you'll see the verify CSRF token middleware. And there's a array here called accept where you could list routes or URI patterns that you would want to exclude from the CSRF verification step. And examples of that might be if you're dealing with like a third party API, maybe like a credit card merchant, they might actually be sending requests to your server that are valid. Uh, but they wouldn't be able to generate the appropriate CSRF tokens because they are coming from their own site, not from your site. So that might be a situation in which you would bypass the CSRF verification step. Um, of course, you would want to apply whatever other security protocols they have in place to make sure that those communications are secure. But those are really edge cases, getting into a more advanced stuff for the average user with your simple post forms. Just remember to include that CSRF token and take advantage of this very simple uh, but important security step that Laravel has built in.